Hi guys, this is Maria. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will go over Montessori primary math materials, the concepts behind, some activities you can do, and give you in-depth look on how to use the most amazing materials that I find very useful at home. Whether you're looking to homeschool your child, interested in the Montessori approach, or thinking about getting your child into a Montessori school, this video will give you a look into quite a few activities if you are new to my channel, I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old and in the current situation of homeschooling them both, regularly they go to a Montessori school and I work in the industry of childhood, education and development. So on my channel, I largely focus on Montessori activities, play-based activities, toys, reviews, and also mommy-related content like routines, day in the lives, and all that good stuff. So if that's the kind of content you're looking for, subscribe to my channel and click that notifications button. Now let's get started. One of the biggest concepts for Montessori is having concrete materials. Concrete materials is the materials that you can touch and feel. Young children aren't really absorbing abstract ideas very well. And that's what something that was observed by Marie Montessori when she was first writing out her method. So the very first thing that your child will be working on in a Montessori classroom is actually one-to-one -one correspondence. When I do number recognition materials or activities at home, I use my tracing numbers, which are rather large. I use my tray. Uh, this is colored Kindle in beads. And then I use some kind of object. It could be pasta noodles glass beads or something relatable for the child like cards or dinosaurs in, in Justin's case and the way we do it let's say we trace the number with two fingers it can be challenging for some younger toddlers so if your child is not able to separate the two fingers first of all work on them on this skill because it is developed in the muscles but secondly you can use one finger and trace it in traditional Montessori classroom, you would have sandpaper numbers. I don't have sandpaper numbers. I just use these cards, which I find to be very useful and they actually mimic those numbers very well. And then once, uh, let's say baby Justin, I ask him, what number is that? Four, all right, so we trace number four on the card, then we trace it in this tray and then we pull out four glass beads. And another material that teaches one-to-one -one correspondence is this plate. I've shared it in many of my videos, so I will not spend much time on them, but they go from numbers one through 10 and you put corresponding number of objects to each number. The next one is one of the most iconic Montessori materials is the colored beads. And this material is actually used in Montessori classroom for a very long time. So this typically is introduced at about Four years of age, I do it with Justin just because he is homeschooled with Scarlett currently and also in Montessori environment, children are grouped from ages three to five. And so they are in the same classroom environment. So the way those beads are designed is that each number has a corresponding bead, but it also is color coded and there's multitude of activities you can do with those. So the very first time you present the color beads to your child, you need to lay them out next to the numbers. My numbers this in this tray are from teens and tens board that you will see later in this video, but basically you would lay out number one and take out one bead and lay it down. And then once you show the lesson to your child, uh, you would ask your child to repeat it. Um, to make this activity more challenging when your child already knows their numbers, uh, what I do, I just dump all those beads out and we lay out the numbers from one to 10 and then we go, okay, can you pick out number two? Eventually what will happen, your child will, will also not only be able to count all of the beads, which are really fun for young children because they can feel them, uh, but also they will be able to look at the colors and um, they will be able to tell by the color the number of beads. So they associate the numbers in multiple. The next way to use the same beads is addition, beginning addition, and it's rather simple exercise. And another thing when you do with your children, even when you do one-to-one -one correspondence, I would suggest when you lay out your numbers, for example, you have five beads, right? This is a row of five. When you move on to six, leave the five at the top and put one, under it so they can always visually see this is five this is what five looks like well how do i make six six out of five i add one it also helps you trying to break down the numbers and uh that's one of the concepts in montessori that you don't really move on from numbers from one to ten up until your child is able to break it down in essence it's a beginning addition so uh for example your child knows that 
uh, one and and um, four is going to make up five. And uh, that's the reason why these beads are color coded because it gives a visual concept of a very abstract idea. I'm gonna deviate a bit over here and just talk a little bit about why is it important to have uh, actually hands-on materials and visualize it. Um, Montessori math blends beautifully with Singapore math. And if you're not familiar, if you have younger children, I'll just give you a little bit of information on that. Singapore math uh, is considered to be one of the strongest ways to teach math to children. Kids did learn Singapore math one year over year on an international basis. And the idea in Singapore math actually is very similar to Montessori concept because they start with a very hands-on stage where they actually touch and feel, they count the materials together. Then they move on to a pictorial stage when they draw it out. And then the third stage is actually the one that is abstract when they discuss abstract ideas. And it is based on uh, the level that they are in, in their grade and it, because it gives different levels for children and it also depends on their level period. For example, your child might be very good at math and they're doing addition, well then the teacher has an ability to dive deeper in solving those problems uh, at the same level. So um, the Montessori and Singapore math kind of teach the kids understanding math on a different level versus just memorization. So before you move on from numbers from one through 10, a good thing to do to double check your child's full understanding of it is, is doing a mystery number game. The way I do mine, I just put this uh, wooden numbers in the mystery bag. Mystery bag activities work great with kids for letters, numbers, anything, because it is fun. So we would pull it out and we would have to count out. And I've done many actually activities and videos that are not necessarily Montessori, that are more play-based but then have the same concept. So your child like randomly can pull a number and tell you what this number is and is able to pull the appropriate number of objects that corresponds to this number. And after that, when you feel like your child totally grasped the concept, you can move on to the next material and activity. So the next important material that I really enjoy using at home with the kids is a teen and 10 board. This material is introduced after your child has mastery of numbers one through 10 and it works on teens and tens. So it comes with four plates like this and it comes with numbers. Um, sorry, they move every time I pick it up. So the way we work on it is, it's actually kind of complex and a very long job. So um, some children will be ready for it academically, but they might not be ready for it uh, based on this just their development because they don't have the attention span to complete it. Now, um, ten board works this way. Now, you your child understand the concept of 10, right? So what you do, you start going, okay, so 10, then we slide in one, 11, and then you lay out 10. Um, in my case, I use chickpeas, and it's always 10 chickpeas on each single line all the way up until you go to 20. And then your child fills in the second row. We use pasta. You can use any kind of material that is different enough from the chickpeas so your child can grasp the concept. Okay, well, so 10 is 10. It's constant. And this is number one that is in front of each single uh, number here. And then the numbers right next to this one, that's what's changing. And it's the same change as if I go from one to nine. So it's going to be 11. All right, so if this is one, then the next number is gonna have two, which makes it number 12. How many pasta noodles do you need to add for it to become 12? You added one before. And once you, when you do Montessori activities with your children, you always ask questions. You don't give them the answers. You kind of guide them into understanding because the point and the goal of all of these activities is to get understanding, not to memorize. Anything. The child has a mastery of uh, the teens uh, and you feel like they have got the concept and they're able to complete the team board on their own, you can switch up the numbers out of order. That's a good way to make sure that they understand the concept. They didn't just memorize the process. Uh, so you would pay, put, for example, like 11 and 13 or 11 and 15 to see if they understand, well, the 15 means that I have always 10 is at the top is a constant, but I need to put five underneath to make it 15. Um, this same 
material is also used for tons. So once your child uh, mastered numbers from one through 20, with understanding of what those numbers are, you can make move to tons. A new activity that I just introduced this week for both of my children, because my three-year-old kind of sits through everything my five-year-old does, is the tens. So we're starting to learn the tens, and I just wrote out 10, 20, 30 through 100 um, on two pieces of paper, and I'm using coins. Coins is actually a great way to teach your child anything because they are interested in money, and it's a very hands-on material, and you can tell them, well, once we count them, they are yours, so you can go and buy something. Now, the way I've uh, designed this activity, first, my whole goal, again, is to make my kids understand what, what it means versus them just to do uh, an automatic activity. So I told them that, okay, so this is a dime. Dime represents 10 cents. So we laid out 10 cents and a dime. And then I told them, okay, so this is 10. It's one 10. And this is two tens, which means 20. And then we went through all of the numbers. This is three tens, which means 30. And when I would ask the question about each one of them, I would go this way. Okay, so you just made 30. You put three tens. Let's look at this. If I can cover this, what number is that? Four. Okay, so to make 40, how many tens do you need to put down if for 30 you put three down? Now, it is a really complex material. Honestly, my three-year-old did not see through it and I did not truly expect him to, but it is a great way to conceptualize this idea of tens. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you, give you some ideas. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Check out my homeschooling vlogs because I go through details of how I build my lessons in those. Also, lots of videos on Montessori at home and how we do Montessori at home overall. And again, I'm very happy to have you here. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you later.